With National Signing Day happening earlier this month, the time has come. What happened to the top 10 recruits from 10 years ago? We will be looking at how much they lived up to their five-star expectations in college, as well as seeing how far their football careers took them. I will be using the list from Rivals.com, and we will kick things off with the highest rated quarterback recruit in the country in 2012. Me now, probably the most famous prospect in the state of Alabama right now, Jameis Winston, quarterback for Hueytown. Jameis Winston, otherwise known as Famous Jameis, had become a high school legend in the state of Alabama, and his accolades by the end of high school had stacked up. He earned Gatorade Player of the Year as a senior, shared MVP honors at the Elite 11 quarterback competition, took home the Under Armour All-America Game MVP, and was even drafted in the 15th round of the MLB draft out of high school, which he decided against to pursue a football career. He apparently had so many college football recruiters pursuing him that he had to change his cell number multiple times. Long story short, he decided the best fit was with Florida State, and after redshirting for a year, Winston took on the starting role as a redshirt freshman, and in his attempt to fill the shoes of standout quarterback and first round pick EJ Manuel, Winston balled out. Coaching, and I think that that's helped him this year. Winston can't, oh he did get out of there. How did that happen? And then he throws a touchdown to Nick O'Leary. Oh my goodness, what a play. In his first game, he went 25 of 27 and had five total touchdowns. He absolutely rocked, ranked Maryland and number three Clemson, putting up an average of over 400 yards and nine total touchdowns in back-to-back -to -back games. He got the job done a few weeks later against number seven Miami and then dominated against ranked Florida. By the end of the 2013 college football regular season, Florida State was undefeated and their freshman quarterback was the ACC Rookie of the Year as well as Player of the Year. And nationally, Winston took home a bunch of awards, most notably the Heisman Trophy. This made him the second freshman ever to win the award. On top of that, the team was playing in the national championship. Talk about insanity. However, off the field, Jameis was beginning to build a reputation. We've carefully examined all the evidence in this case and have concluded that no charges will be filed against uh, anyone in, in this case. During that incredible Heisman season, Winston had been accused of alleged sexual assault. Authorities ultimately didn't press charges and Winston was allowed to play due to a lack of evidence. But this certainly overshadowed what was being done on the field. With all this happening in the background, Winston capped off his freshman season with a national championship victory in epic fashion. Things continued on the same path in 2014. Jameis found headlines once again in the preseason for issues off the field, this time for stealing $32 worth of crab legs. This became a meme at the time, and then early in the season, Winston was suspended for yelling an obscene phrase that some of you might remember. Of course, on the field, Winston and Florida State picked up right where they left off in 2013. They were incredible, and they finished the regular season 13-0 and played in the first ever college football playoff. So that meant that Winston was the most controversial player in college football and also had won 26 out of 26 career games to that point. That is just wild. But in the college football playoff, down by 19 to Oregon, Winston had his most infamous on the field moment. This would be his final college game and his only loss as a starter. With the first pick in the 2015 NFL Draft, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Jameis Winston. To this point for his pro career, he certainly hasn't lived up to number one expectations. Eventually Tampa Bay would move on and they went on to win a Super Bowl. But after a fresh start in New Orleans, Jameis Winston still has time for a renaissance. And honestly, his pro career deserves to be talked about in another video. Now, before we go on to number nine, here's a word from today's sponsor. The road to the Super Bowl is never easy, but the road to your Super Balls is a few clicks away with Manscaped. This year, take your package to the next level with their Performance Package 4.0, and their brand new ultra premium body wash and two-in-one shampoo and conditioner. 
Inside the Performance Package 4.0, you'll find the Signature Lawnmower 4.0. This electric trimmer is designed to trim hair on loose skin. The advanced skin safe technology reduces cuts and nicks on your delicate nuts. It also comes equipped with a 4000K LED spotlight. Also, the grooming checklist isn't complete without their Crop Preserver Ball Deodorant and Crop Reviver Ball Toner Spray. Recently, I've been traveling more and this bonus shed travel bag that comes with the package is a massive plus. It just makes organization at home and on the road much easier. Let's blitz poor hygiene all night long and use the best tools for the job. Be sure to travel to manscaped.com for our exclusive offer at 20% off plus free shipping with the code KTO. Coming in at number nine, the highest ranked recruit out of Pennsylvania, was Noah Spence. Spence racked up over 200 tackles and 35 sacks in his final two years of high school football. This led him to winning Gatorade Player of the Year in the state. And as one of the top talents coming out of the North, he went on to commit to Ohio State. As a true freshman in college, Spence managed to play in 12 games, but his real impact began to happen in his sophomore season, where he would go on to have 50 tackles and eight sacks. But his 2013 season ended on a sour note. He was suspended for three games following the Big Ten Championship after he tested positive for MDMA. Then after another failed drug test in September of 2014, Spence was suspended indefinitely and was ruled permanently ineligible by the Big Ten Conference in November. Spence was forced to transfer to lesser known Eastern Kentucky the following year. And in his lone season there, he dominated earning the Ohio Valley Conference Co-Defensive Player of the Year. This proved that he was still extremely talented, and it got him drafted in the second round of the 2016 NFL Draft by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Spence's pro career looked promising at first. He earned Defensive Rookie of the Month in November of 2016. However, things mostly fizzled out. He got constantly injured, and recently, he's failed to maintain a full-time roster spot. At number 8, coming out of Maryland, Stephon Diggs was a two-way star, being heavily recruited to play receiver at the next level. Despite receiving offers from all around the country, he decided to stay local and commit to Maryland. The thing was, Maryland wasn't exactly killing it at the time. They had gone 2-10 the year that Diggs committed, so clearly playtime and proximity to home were his biggest influences to going there. Right away, he was one of, if not their best player. As a true freshman, he ranked second in the ACC and eighth nationally in all-purpose yards per game, and he finished that season as the runner-up for the ACC Freshman of the Year. He got off to another solid start in his sophomore season, but the year ended early due to injury. Entering 2014, Maryland made the jump from the ACC to the Big Ten, and Diggs would go on to have another good year. But again, he was held back by injuries, and also, he got suspended for a game after refusing to shake hands with Penn State. He did enough though to earn second team all Big Ten honors by the coaches. Because Maryland wasn't great during his time, he kind of flew under the radar as a prospect for the NFL. Despite this, he still decided to forego his last season and entered the NFL draft. He wound up being selected in the fifth round by the Minnesota Vikings. And fast forward into today, his pro career has been incredible, especially considering his draft position. He has continually improved throughout his career, managing to be part of one of the most epic plays in recent playoff history, and is now a back-to-back -back Pro Bowl level receiver in Buffalo. Coming in at number seven, listed at six foot four and over 300 pounds, Eddie Goldman was a high school All-American as a defensive tackle. The dude had over 50 collegiate offers, and along with Jameis Winston, Goldman committed to Florida State. By his sophomore season, he had begun to make a real impact, helping Florida State's defense become insanely dominant. They only allowed a staggering 12.1 points per game, which was the best in the nation. The following year, Goldman would top his career off with achieving All-American honors, helping the Seminoles reach the first ever college football playoff. Goldman would forego his senior year and enter the NFL Draft, where he went on to be selected by the Bears in the second round. In the NFL, he certainly has had his moments, including being selected to the All-Rookie Team by Pro Football Writers of America. 
He also achieved the 12th highest grade in 2018 among interior defenders, and was also selected as a Pro Bowl alternate in 2019. As of now, he is still a member of the Bears. At number 6, coming out of North Carolina and the top defensive end in the country, Jonathan Bullard was so dominant, he later had his high school jersey retired. The 250-pound defender went on to commit to the University of Florida. As a true freshman, he stepped in right away and made an impact, earning all SEC freshman honors. But the following year was rough for not just him, but the entire team. After starting the season highly ranked, they went 4-8. and eight. And Bullard, after being moved from defensive end to defensive tackle, didn't stand out as much as some would have expected. Making the move inside to defensive tackle was a move Bullard wasn't excited about at first, since he had played D-end his whole life. But he began to come around to it, and his play improved in his junior season. Although, he did sort of live in the shadow of Dante Fowler, who was a future top three pick. Talent-wise, Bullard was viewed as a potential draftee following his junior season, but he decided that it was best to return for his final year at Florida, which ended up being a huge boost for him and his teammates. And as a captain, he had a breakout senior year. With 18 tackles for loss, this earned him first-team All-SEC honors. He was a great talent, but above that, he was revered for being an amazing teammate and one of the hardest workers on the team. After helping turn Florida back around, Bullard ended up being selected in the third round by the Chicago Bears. To this day, he never managed to become a full-time starter, but he is still in the NFL. He just finished up a season for his fourth team as a rotational lineman. At number 5, the highest rated running back in high school was Jonathan Gray. Gray's numbers were the stuff of legend. He reached the illustrious 10,000 yard career rushing mark, which as of today, still has him ranked in the top 6 all time in the history of high school football. In his senior year alone, Gray had 3,886 yards and 65 rushing touchdowns. And by far his greatest accomplishment was that he set the all-time high school record for rushing touchdowns in a career. Gray decided to stay local and committed to Texas. But sadly, his college career never quite reached the bar that he had set for himself in high school. He was good as a freshman, certainly not number one overall running back dominant, but good nonetheless. But things took a turn in his sophomore year, which prematurely ended due to an Achilles injury. From there, he slowly declined in production, battling injuries to the end. Then, during his post-collegiate prep for potentially being a late-round pick in 2016, he tore his other Achilles, which wrote off any chances of him being drafted. He made an attempt to make the NFL and CFL in 2017, but nothing ever materialized. Gray is now back at his high school coaching. Coming in at number 4, Shaq Thompson was the highest-ranked safety in the nation. But really, he should have been listed as an athlete, because this dude was Mr. Everything. He was a dominant running back with a combined 3,000 yards and 40 touchdowns over his junior and senior years. Defensively, he was straight intimidating. At 6'2", 210, with the speed of a top 8 California sprinter, he just flew all over the field making plays. After initially committing to Cal, Thompson ended up changing his commitment to Washington. Like high school, Thompson was Mr. Everything at Washington. During 2012 and 13, he lined up all over the defense, from safety to slot corner to linebacker, otherwise known as the Big Nickel, and he was a beast. Then as a junior in 2014, he even lined up at running back, becoming one of the very rare modern players to be great on both sides of the ball in college. After becoming an All-American and winning the Paul Horning Award for the most versatile player in the nation in 2014, Thompson decided to skip his senior year and went on to become a first-round pick. In the NFL, he's been a pretty decent starter throughout his career in Carolina. He never became an elite-level defender, but according to PFF, he's graded out average to above average throughout most of his seasons he's played. In 2021, he was second on the team in total tackles. Coming in at number 3, 
the highest ranked interior defensive lineman in the country, was a 6'4", 275 pound beast out of Texas, Mario Edwards. Because of how fast he was for his size, Edwards lined up at multiple positions defensively. He was USA Today's Defensive Player of the Year his senior season, and he was seen by rivals as their highest graded defensive tackle since 2002. Joining a few others on this list, Edwards committed to Florida State. No wonder the Seminoles were so good in 2013 and 2014. They had landed the top two defensive tackles in high school in 2012, and side by side, Edwards and Eddie Goldman terrorized offensive lines. In 2013, Edwards was all ACC third team, which he improved upon in 2014, earning first team honors. Like fellow teammate Eddie Goldman, Edwards left school early and was also selected in the second round. These two linemen's careers were so in sync, they were drafted within five spots of each other, and Florida State hasn't been as good since they left. For Edwards' pro career, he never quite lived up to second round expectations. He is still in the NFL, but he's been mostly a rotational journeyman kind of guy. He's actually in Chicago now, so him and his old college teammate Eddie Goldman are side by side once again. At number two, Coming in as the top ranked offensive lineman in the country, DJ Humphreys was a brick wall. He did not allow a single sack in his final three years of high school football, and the consensus five-star lineman ended up committing to Florida. Side note, I found it interesting that despite Florida being one of the best states in terms of talent coming out of high school, the five guys in the rivals top 10 that committed to either of the Florida schools were all from other states. But anyways, Humphreys was great right away, managing to start games as a true freshman and earned freshman All-American honors by Sporting News. However, injuries were a limiting factor for the rest of his college career. Again, this was a time where the Gators really fell off a cliff. Humphreys was dominant though when he was able to play. He was seen as a first round talent when it came to the NFL. So he skipped his senior year and he did go on to become a first round pick. Despite not playing as a rookie and dealing with some injuries early on, his NFL career has been a solid one. He managed to become a full-time starter by 2019, and his performance earned him a $45 million extension. He went on to grade out at a high level in 2020 and 21. He had that epic reaction to the Hale Murray in 2020, and this year, he was a pro bowler. Coming in as the top ranked recruit in the country, Doriel Green Beckham was absolutely unguardable as a receiver. By his sophomore year, he was the fastest sprinter in the state of Missouri, and his tape on the football field gives the illusion that he was playing against middle schoolers, since he was so much taller and faster than everyone. With offers from all around the country, Green Beckham decided to stay local, committing to Missouri. After flashing potential early in his true freshman season, Green Beckham made headlines after getting arrested for drug possession. This only got him suspended for two games. He would return, and he would finish up with honorable mention freshman All-American honors. Entering his sophomore season, the story that was forming around his career was based on if he could keep his head on straight, because clearly he was an insane athlete. On the field, he would disappear at times, but then bounce back with an unbelievable performance, most notably in the SEC Championship where he went off for 144 yards and two touchdowns. But following his second season, he would never play another snap of college football. A string of incidents, which included another arrest for a marijuana charge, along with a separate incident where Green Beckham allegedly forced open an apartment door and pushed a woman down a flight of stairs, led to the indefinite suspension and eventual dismissal from the Missouri football team. Despite all these off-field troubles, he was still so gifted that he transferred to Oklahoma, but because of the transfer rules, he had to sit out in 2014. Then after not playing a single down of football for the Sooners, he decided to declare for the NFL draft. This is what is so wild. The man had legal troubles, had been up and down on the field when he played, and hadn't played football in over a year. Yet, he still went on to become a second round pick purely based on his potential. His rookie year, like his time in college, flashed potential. But after the season was over, he was shockingly traded. The Titans supposedly had issues with Green Beckham's focus and dedication. Those factors clearly affected the rest of his pro career, since 
He would go on to have a worse season in Philly in 2016, then was waived before the 2017 season. He never played another snap. He is still having issues with the law, with multiple arrests occurring since 2017, including DWI, possession of a controlled substance and resisting arrest, for assault charges, and violation of probation. So in wrapping up this video, there definitely were the disappointments from this class. But overall, I believe that this is the most productive class that I've covered in this series. One of the biggest what ifs from this class was the current high school career rushing touchdown leader, Jonathan Gray. I know he ended up getting hurt multiple times, but the dude ended up choosing Texas, which really began to fall off during his time there. I can't help but wonder what would have happened if he went to a more successful school. Because he was extremely talented, considering he was the number one back in the country in 2012. And there were some beasts in this class ranked behind him. With a tight end, and full back, and having to recruit out of a lot of the kind of pro style. Gurley, touchdown. Speaking of pro style.